Jack, lovely to meet you. So it's a tremendous film, but it's also a difficult watch and there's so much tension that's kept throughout the majority of it. How is it like filming that? What was your experience of being part of that? Did it feel very intense? And how did you work with the other characters? Yeah, it was, um, it was a very intense experience. I think it probably didn't help the fact that we were shooting from six o'clock every evening to six o'clock every morning. So we were in this like state of just perpetual darkness. It was always night. We would get home to our hotel and people would be getting up in their jogging gear to go out, you know, and start their mornings. And that can really kind of tweak your senses a little bit, you know? And then the, I think, you know, the most important thing for us all as actors on this project was establishing a level of trust with one another and developing relationships where um, we felt safe and we gave each other the safety to, to go to these places of either being, you know, uh, somebody who harbors feelings of white supremacy or somebody who's a victim. And they were both, I think, very difficult places to go to, but, but that trust and that developed relationship allowed us to kind of achieve that. And of course also having Catherine um, overseeing everything that was happening and her encouragement and um, the fact that we were all kind of trying to articulate this message that she had brought. I mean, it's a film that tries to tackle a very delicate but also extremely relevant topic. What do you think the impact of this film will be? Um, my hope is that, at least for my own community, at least for, um, you know, Caucasians globally, uh, I think that we shouldn't take for granted uh, the idea that we're somehow reasonable and that we're fair with people and that we're inclusive and that we are okay with multiculturalism. I think that every single person needs to really look at themselves and say, how do I feel about other people? Am I afraid of um, other cultures? Do I feel like I'm losing my identity just by merit of not understanding somebody else? And if you can really ask yourself that question and feel that you do have that fear, um, you probably need to go out and start experiencing other people and opening yourself up a bit more to the world because it's a time of change and hopefully the outcome is going to be that um, multiculturalism and, and unity among people um, the world over is, is, is the result of this period in history. And your character has to embody some of like the worst aspects of police brutality, racial violence, or at least your, your accomplice who's, who's driving it does as well. What was it like to try and play that character? It's very difficult. It's, um, you know, I've always kind of had a, a, a sense of social justice and I've always felt very strongly that all people are, are equal and to suspend that is a really nasty thing and to try and put yourself in the mindset of somebody who doesn't hold those beliefs, who is uh, afraid of, of other cultures and of other people and doesn't understand the benefits of multiculturalism, um, that's a very difficult thing to do but again as I said before you know the thing that made it possible was the relationships that we built with one another and the trust upon which we began this project together you know. And were there any challenges in telling a story that is a real life story and so it's a mix between fiction and fact? Yeah there certainly were um, you know and uh, I mean we had some of the people who'd actually been involved in this event on the set of the film uh, continuously throughout the, the principal photography and that was difficult, it was difficult to watch these people in some way experiencing this, this event, this awful atrocity that had happened in their lives again. Um, that was really hard but I think the driving force behind our um, involvement in the film was that we all felt that this was a really important story and it was something that we wanted to um, articulate an important message as one community you know, to kind of be, be together and make this statement as one group of people, regardless of our skin colour or our race or our beliefs. We all wanted to say that this is what we feel is right, you know? Yeah, so I play a police officer um, called Demons, who arrives at the Algiers Motel with two other cops who know each other very well. Um, I think that they're 
potentially a little more reconciled in their views about ethnic minorities and um, about other races. And for my character, Demons, he's probably a little bit more on the fence. Um, and that's the real danger. I think that it's the people who are sitting on the fence who aren't the, the loudest of the ideological extremists. It's the quieter people who haven't quite made the decision for themselves and maybe feel like they have something to prove and feel as though they need to categorize themselves are the most dangerous because they're the ones who oftentimes perpetrate these atrocious offenses against people. So um, yeah, that's the character I play in the film. Yeah, I think she's a very conscientious person. She's incredibly intellectual and she's very concise about the statements that she wants to make as a director. Um, that's something that we can see in spades in uh, The Hurt Locker and in, in, in Zero Dark Thirty. And with this film, it was clearly something that was closer to home for her, you know. This is uh, an issue that she's looking at that is, you know, systemic within her own country and it's not necessarily a broader, more global issue. This is something at the heart of American society and it's been there since the foundation of the United States. And so I think it's a very brave move for Catherine as a white filmmaker, as a female filmmaker, to, um, to engage with this issue in a way where her hope is to open a dialogue, to open a conversation, um, not to have any sense of entitlement, uh, you know, in, in her uh, examination of the issue, but to basically say, look, we need to begin a conversation somewhere. And I think I have as much of a right as anyone else to begin that conversation. And I, yeah, I think that's a really good thing. I think he's I think he's certainly intimidated by the situation and um, I've had a few discussions with people about this but you know as I was kind of trying to explain a moment ago my objective as an actor in this film was to examine what the triggers of white supremacy are my character is not somebody who owns racism he's not somebody who would probably categorize himself as a racist He's more somebody who's sitting on the fence. And I think that when initially, one of the first triggers is that um, he has this moment of rejection from a white woman, a woman who's the same race as he is, and needs to offset that blame somewhere else. But that's not enough to trigger such violence in a person and to, uh, give them the ability to own their sense of supremacy over someone else. I think that the real trigger for that is feeling as though um, you have to belong to a group. And with Will's character and with Ben's character, they're, they're a mob. They're part of a mob. It's a mob mentality. And it's like, one of us is doing this, we're all doing this. And males in particular, are always stimulated by that feeling and always respond to that challenge. And I think Demons is no different. And that's what that's the journey that we see his character go through in this film, is that he becomes this thing and he is an atrocious person through his willingness to become part of a group. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much and congratulations on a great film. Thank you.